I would like to shout out one of my uh, subscribers and followers, Black Phoenix, on Twitter for tagging me in this story. And this is going to be another melanated excellent story. And this is going to be the couple edition. So in this picture, you see Corey and Tamara or Tamara. I'm not sure how she pronounces it. Galloway. And they are the first. Uh, they are a couple who owns New York City's first black owned sports team. You have to really, really grasp just on that saying alone. They own the first black owned sports team out of any sports team that has ever been in the city, state, however you want to put it, of New York. Because, you know, you have so many teams in New York. You have the the um, the New York Mets. You have the New York Knicks. You have the Brooklyn uh, Nets. You have the uh, the New York Yankees, the New York Jets. For hockey, you have the New York Rangers and the New York Islands and all these other New York teams. And they own the first black-owned sports team in New York. And you see that they're holding a football. Now, they don't own an NFL team. This is actually going to be an arena league, which means it's indoor football. But, you know, making strides every which way. But look at how long it took for this to actually happen. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get into the story. That is coming from the Black Enterprise. Brooklyn natives Corey and Tamara Galloway dreamt of owning a professional sports team in New York City. And they made that dream come true while making history as the owners of the National Arenas League, a uh, National Arena League's New York Streets, a franchise football team. The Galloways are now a part of a small group of African-Americans who own their own professional sports team. And when they say small, they ain't lying. They mean tiny. According to BlackBusiness.com, Corey Galloway is also the founder of a New York-based business development and direct investment company, Legacy Growth Partners. He is also an avid football fan who travels all over to attend games and football practices. Attending games regularly inspired Corey to seek ways that he could be more involved in the business side of the sports industry. Being a black American, the Galloways experienced a number of problems while developing New York streets due to the severe lack of representation in the industry, as well as people doubting them. People even asked where their money came from. How how did I know they was going to ask that? How did I know that it was going to be some pocket watching individuals out there, some haters going to ask where did they get the money? That's none of their business where they got the money. Maybe they, I don't know, actually worked hard for it. However, these negative experiences didn't discourage the Galloways. In fact, they hoped to pave the way for more black Americans to own sports teams. For me, as a football fan, as a football player, I acknowledge that there is a barrier of entry that created with ticket pricing. Not everyone is able to really enjoy the game and see the games live and up front. So creating that opportunity and being able to provide them with an option to see a game live. I'm just excited that those kids will be able to enthusiastically say, oh, wow, I'm going to a game. Corey told Black Business News. The Galloways have the support of colleagues and friends, including football player Deval Ellis. Last year, the New York streets played their first game at Westchester County Center in White Plains, New York. Now, this is what you call a power couple that doesn't get the acknowledgement because they're not celebrities. Major moves for these two. I'm so proud of both of them because, like they said, it's a very small group of black people who own a sports team. And you have not only them owning a sports team, but they're doing it together as a couple. Usually you'll have one over the other and it's usually the man. But I think it's dope that they have that they're running this together and hopefully the story can spread a little bit more more further than what it is. That way, more people can get exposed to uh, this part of the industry, because like you said, when it like it it goes back to that video I did about the Rooney rule, like how you have black um, people like they can't get any further than a coaching job, like they'll never let them be the owner. But these two right here was like bump that Rooney rule. As far as I know, I don't know if the Rooney rule applies to arena football, but the arena football league is a small league in and of itself as well. But I think that's dope. And, you know, to see um, black people actually owning sports teams and, you know, look at Ice Cube. He has the big three league. And that's crazy because this guy didn't even play basketball as a career. He was a rapper turned actor. And now he owns the big three league which hosts a plethora of 
uh, former NBA players continuing to live out their hoop dreams. And now you have this couple right here. But I hope that it grows legs because, like I said, the Arena Football League is a very small league. It's not heavily pushed by the, like the NFL by far. Um, so hopefully they can actually go somewhere with this. Because as a matter of fact, where I work at, they had the Arena Football um, League. But it only lasted maybe two years or two seasons. Then it ended up dissolving and the whole league just fell apart. So it's no longer in existence, but at least they did win one championship out of it. So that that's one good thing that came from it. But shout out to these two right here. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this down in the comments. Like, share, subscribe. Make sure to follow me on Twitter if you haven't done so already. Have your notifications turned on and I will talk to you in the next one.